In Jesus' name, amen. Two men were, uh, two hunters actually, who came across with a bear as they were hunting. And so they had no option other than run for, then they had to run for cover. One man climbed on a tree while the other man found a cave nearby where he went into. The bear was no hurry, no hurry to eat, so he just sat down waiting and almost not believing in his luck, just waiting for his meal. But at some point, that hunter inside the cave came out, panting and gasping, and he looks around, goes back into the cave. Now he does it a second time, comes back to the cave door, looks around, sees the bear, doesn't know where, what to do, goes back inside. He does it a third time, and then his friend from the top of the tree, uh, he yells, Woody, don't do that, stay in the cave until the bear goes away. And then Woody responds, he replies to him, I can't, there's another bear in there. How many bears do you see around you these days? Sometimes it's really more than one. They, might, they can be in our house, in our workplace, in the street. We are now living with a bear so small that no one can see but have, has stopped the world. This story sort of illustrates this type of situations that are not rare in our life when you have trials and temptations and difficulties. Wait, trials and temptations, are they the same? Is there a difference between them? Do they come together? Are they separate things? This is, this is one of the themes that St. Peter addresses in the epistle today when he talks about uh, trials and we want to have a closer look on it. Some time ago I sort of did a little research online and questionnaire actually. I asked some people to respond and answer to me. Do you think trials and temptations are the same or are they different? Got different responses, different replies. Some of them were, yes, they are just the same. I don't see any difference. Others said, uh, trial, it was tests my faith and temptations to test my principles. Or in every temptation, we have a trial. In every trial, we have a temptation. Not that all these answers are right or wrong. It's just some samples. In many ways, trials and temptations, they may look like the same and they sometimes come together. They come in form of health problems, they come in, in, in form of unemployment, fear of the future, our means of subsistence when they are in jeopardy, or those situations when nobody is watching what I'm doing, so we do things we shouldn't. Temptations. And sometimes they may all come all together in a bundle, like the situation we are living right now. There's lots of things going around, lots of uncertainty, lots of information that is shared. We sometimes are not even sure where to look and who to trust and believe, because sometimes information is even, even contradictory. In these times of a trial and temptation that we are undergoing, like we are living right now, this quarantine, I started to hear some questions about it, especially when it comes to churches closing down. Should we actually close down, even with the government recommendations? Uh, is that a sign that we don't trust in God for our present and our future? Isn't our faithfulness to God being tested? Isn't this a trial that we should go with God and, and endure and, and, and win with Him? Uh, are we doubting that God protects us, that He will be here with us? And then nobody, nothing would happen to nobody of us because we are faithful in the trial in Christ. I understand where that comes from, but precaution and obedience to the authorities is not opposed to faith and faithfulness, especially in these times when we uh, have means to be together even when apart. I can be there where you are talking with you right now. But when it comes to doubting God to the future, let me ask you, do you have insurance for your house or for your car? Do you usually buy insurance? Now, wouldn't that also be something that shows that you don't really trust God for your future? So you want to be on the safe side and you buy insurance for the things you own so you don't get uh, things when things like take a turn to the worst, 
uh, you are well protected. I know this question is all settled for us today. Nobody even thinks about it. We just buy insurance. But know that a hundred years or so ago, for many Christians, that posed a very difficult question when insurance started to be sold and bought. If I buy insurance, am I distrusting God for my future? So these are problems that come and go with different situations. And we always have to look to the Word, word of God so that we don't try to make statements that don't match it and we might get into some situations where we think one thing is the right thing, but the Word of God is showing a different thing. The fact is that so many things bring temptations and trials, and when they come, usually one of these two happens. Either we are derailed from our faith and we fall in temptation, or we are strengthened in our faith by the action of the Holy Spirit under a trial. I would say that there is a slight difference, at least, at least a little bit of a difference, if it's not a major difference between them. Temptation, that's one thing that uh, tests my faith. And trials are things that strengthen it. So temptations usually will try to make me fall from my faith. And trials, when God allows them, they are to strengthen, to keep me even more steadfast in my faith. The Bible declares that God himself doesn't tempt anyone, yet we know that sometimes he allows some trials in our life. And they are there to strengthen our faith like refined gold by fire. We must, sure, we, we must make sure we understand well his way of action. And we learn from St. Peter that trials happen to those who love the Lord. When you Lord, love the Lord and when you are in faith in that's when your faith can be tested. Otherwise, which faith would be the one that is tested? And Peter knows very well how that goes because his colorful and very prompt personality got him sometimes in lots of trouble. But the Lord brought him back. And as we read a little further in the Gospel of John, after G uh, Peter has denied Jesus, Jesus brings him back and says, Feed my sheep, be the pastor of my sheep. Jesus Christ himself, when he came to earth, he was tempted in the likeness of man, only that he never sinned, because he came to be the perfect person, the perfect one that would resist every single temptation, being perfect until the end, until he finished his work of love on the cross. He suffered, died, and rose again so that our faith would be anchored in God's love and grace. And that's where we want to be when trials come, when temptations try to lead us astray, under God's grace. This is St. Peter's reminder for Christians at all time. We have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ's work is complete. He took our place and conquered life, death, temptations, trials, everything. So his resurrection is ours too. Faith and hope and strength belong to us under God's grace. When we are in God's hands, the safest place in the world, that's the best place to be when trials come, when temptations try to lead us astray. And plus we have an inheritance. We have that inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading in heaven with Christ. St. Peter assures us of that. It's always good to remember when we are facing temptations that try to make us give up our faith, or we, and when we are undergoing trials that are meant to refine and to strengthen our faith. There's a short phrase that is attributed to Luther. I'm not really sure if he said that. The phrase is really meaningful and says, pray and let God worry. Sometimes we try to solve problems, to face temptations, and to undergo trials with our own hands, thinking that Jesus is my co-pilot, but I'm actually the pilot of my life, so if I need any advice, I'll just ask him. Pray and let God worry. Christ is the pilot. He is the leader of our life. He guides our life to green pastures, to still waters, He's the one who can come to us even when our doors are locked, when our houses are locked, houses are locked, 
as we saw in the gospel that the Sabbath because of the virus of death that was around them, they thought they were going to be killed and we were going to die. Jesus comes there, even with the doors locked, and says, Peace be with you. Jesus comes to your house, even when you are locked down in there. He says the same thing through his word. Peace be with you. And also pray and let me worry. I'm the one who do the worry and I guide you. Just place your trust and faithfulness in me. And follow my commandments. You don't really need to think that if you follow authorities' directions and things are going around you, you are not being faithful. We just we will uh, uh, quit being faithful if we quit the Word of God. As we are pinned down steadfast in this Word, that's when we know that the Holy Spirit, by His action in our hearts, keeps us steadfast and faithful in temptations and trials. So what about those bears? Yes, they keep, they keep coming. They'll be there and keep tempting us to give up our faith. There is no God. If there were, I wouldn't be in this trouble. The word wouldn't be in this mess, or that's temptation. By faith in Jesus Christ, we see the trial and the freedom it brings. We hear his voice, I am with you always. I have already fought those bears for you. And I'll keep fighting the new ones in you and with you. Your strength is in me in grace and love. Make sure you keep those words from the Lord clear. Don't let your faith be misguided by someone who would promise that being in Christ means no bad things will touch you. St. Peter doesn't agree with that. And also, don't let your faith be attacked by those who say that in tough times, there is no God to help you out. Even though some bears are big and strong, greater and stronger is the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, the one who protects us in temptation and leads us through every trial under his grace.